I'd like to reopen the regular meeting of the Bronxville Board of Trustees for April 11th, 2022, and ask all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight is our um, annual meeting, for want of a, a better word, and we have annual appointments and annual actions. And um, I would um, I would be happy to read them if that's um, if that's all right, Mr. Palmer, and just read them now. No. Sure. Okay. And do I need? I think if you uh, if you make do I need a motion? to accept these so before I read our appointments council so yeah uh, you're going to some, some you're going to designate some and then ask for a motion from the board to accept to approve your designations yeah okay but I read them first and then get the motion to improve them yeah, okay all right it would be deputy mayor robert underhill for a one year term Village Clerk James Palmer, one-year term. These are all one-year terms. Village Treasurer and Receiver of Taxes, Lori Voss. Deputy Village Treasurer, Caitlin Fitzpatrick. Village Assessor, Jerry Ayagallo. Village Historian, Ray Gesselbrock. Village Prosecutor, Ronnie Ritz. Registrar, Dulce Angel. And Deputy Registrar, Marianne Magliato who is an incumbent, <laughs> as is everyone else, but it's a nice word. <laughs> uh, the auditor, the Board of Trustees for a one-year term is the village administrator for the purpose of reviewing and improving monthly abstracts of purchase as prepared by the village treasurer. Auditor to the Justice Court, Lori Voss, village auditor, O'Connor Davies, Check signatures, the mayor, the deputy mayor, the village administrator, treasurer, or deputy treasurer. Uh, court checks shall be done by a village justice. Bank transfers and federal wire transfers must be signed by any two of the following mayor, deputy mayor, village administrator, or treasurer. Uh, goods and service not subject to competitive bidding. Uh, estimated purchases between $1,000 and $2,999. Uh, $3,000 to $19,999. Um, these are a procurement policy. Essentially, if it's under $3,000, you need two, two quotes. If it's under $20,000, you need three quotes. And if it's above $20,000, um, it has to be a public advertised bid. Is that a fair yes. condensation of that? Okay. Public works, if it's under $5,000, it's two quotes. Under $35,000, three quotes. And $35,000 or more subject to publicly advertised bids. And this is all state law. This is right, not village law. State. That's New York that's state law. law. Yes. Bank depositories. Um, Authorized continuing to have funds at J.P. Morgan Chase, Sterling National, People's United, and Westchester Bank. Uh, surety bonds will be filed in the following amounts. All employees, $200,000 per, per loss, premiums paid by the village. Official newspaper, and it has to be a written newspaper. We've tried very hard to get it an online paper. With a paid circulation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But it, so it, it is the journal news, and that's where all publication of legal notices will appear. 
Uh, meeting dates of the Board of Trustees, 7 p.m. on the second Monday of each month, excluding the month of August. And if I could just clarify on that, and that for the public's edification, that is a change. The board used to begin its regular meeting at 8 p.m., but I think it was the consensus of the board that 7 o'clock was uh, more appropriate, so we did make that change, sir. Perfect, and there will be no August meetings unless uh, publicly noticed. Uh, and meetings are subject to our adopted rules of procedure, which was last amended in 2020. And mileage reimbursement is going to change starting on Jan 1, 22, the standard mileage rates for the use of a car, 58.5 cents per mile for business miles driven. All right, those are the, um, the very much required ones. The next ones are boards and committees. And these, every single one of these is our village residents who have offered their time. And um, this is just a huge thank you to them because looking at this list, there's hundreds of hours that have already been donated by many of these people. And there's a great deal of new names too. So a huge thank you to everyone I'm going to mention. Ann Poorman and Guy Longobardo reappointed on the Finance Committee for a two-year term. Chris Fay, Rich Martini, and Heather Miner, newly appointed until 2023. Planning Board, Gary Reitz, appointed chair for a two-year term. Larry Vranka, vice chair for a two-year term and Albert Van Ness as an alternate for a five-year term. Design Review Committee, Stephen Hawkey and Larry Vranka, each appointed for a two-year term. Nina Evison, a newly appointed alternate for a two-year term. Zona, Zoning Board of Appeals, Martin Muir, reappointed for a five-year term. Mary Ellen Carpenter and Gregory Jackno as alternates each reappointed to a two-year term. Ethics Board, William Slattery and Marilyn Wood Hill each appointed to a two-year term. The Board of Assessment Review, David Harris reappointed to a five-year term and Tom Leslie newly appointed to a five-year term. And the Library Board of Trustees, Josh Rucci and Nina Evison, each reappointed for a three year term. And thank you, one and all, to every one of these villagers. It's a great mix of, um, of talent, it's a great mix, mix of representing different neighborhoods, age groups. So, um, a huge thank you there. So, Mayor, uh, I think then you can take an omnibus. And now you can take an omnibus. I can do an omnibus. Do I have someone to accept all these appointments? Well, I, I would move that we uh, approve and accept all the appointments and uh, to village village offices and to boards and committees as recited by the mayor and uh, approve the annual action actions recited by the mayor with regard to signatures and procurement policy. Well done. <laughs> Do I have no a second? You know, no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Well done. Yeah. Yes, uh, and I just want to say our colleague Mary Barons is not feeling well tonight, um, uh, but she's aware of all that um, we're going to be doing tonight. Um, Mayor's report, just asking you support our movie theater, our picture house. I'm writing this week about ways that you can join to be part. You can certainly go to the movies, which would be wonderful, but the way to join the um, Picture House family, and our, our uh, Bronxville Adult School really needs some of your good ideas, your advice, so I ask anyone listening to reach out to me. They're going to have their 80th anniversary, 
but COVID um, really was hard on the school in terms of classes and as everyone can guess. So please, if you have any expertise to offer, um, reach out to me directly as we would love to form a community steering committee. Um, a couple other, some great news. I just got notice this afternoon from our county executive, George Latimer, and our county legislator, James Nolan, that um, they work together in a real nice bipartisan way, and the county DPW is going to put back the, the bridge that was washed away in our park. So huge, huge success. Um, and I thank both those gentlemen because they, they worked on it together. And, um, and, and uh, Mayor, I think you deserve some credit for- uh, Annoying them? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> advocating, advocating, advocating on the village's behalf. <laughs> Oh, well, I just know it, it, it's used by Tuckahoe, Yonkers, Bronxville, and, and I live near it, and I see all my neighbors. I realized I was going to say seniors, but I am one myself. Um, and it's, people relied on that because it was actually a one-mile loop. And, and now it's very, it's, it's just something that's small, but the ripple effect is huge. So I just was thrilled to get that email. Oh, well, they're going to, they're going out for um, what planners to plan it, to get the specs for. So they're going to start the process immediately, right. but honestly, how long it takes, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, and then we also uh, heard from Congressman Bowman's office. Um, they actually reached out to me after reading my column about, you know, people who are food insufficient in Westchester. And uh, the deputy mayor and I have actually been in contact with their office, and we're going to kick off a food drive in the village uh, with the congressman coming at 11 a.m. on Sunday, April 24th. Um, and Bob uh, very graciously volunteered to be the point person on our end. Where, where we'll just, where oh, in front of Village Hall. We're going to start because every all the donations will be at Village Hall. We'll send out an e-blast um, as to um, the congressman's office sent me ideas of what kind of food people would prefer, and it'll probably last a week. And... Um, but I just wanted to announce it that literally was this afternoon before I came back over. Because um, we have to remember one in six of our neighbors in Westchester are food insufficient. Um, and the police department in the uh, same kind of spirit, they're, they're um, coordinating with the Yonkers Police Department and until May 7th, you can drop off any prom dress in a, um, a box they have at the police department is because they're looking to get dresses so every young lady who wants to go to the prom and they have a, a place in Yonkers where they're going to sort them and size them and then people can pick them up. So anyone out there with dresses, you can start bringing them in now through May 7th. Um, finally, just one nice um, just piece of news. Yesenia uh, Tover, our assistant court clerk, got a day named for her in Westchester County. It was Yesenia Tovar Day on March 25th, and she got letters from the congressman, the head of the Yonkers City Council, she even had her name on that big marquee in front of the county center um, because she took it upon herself to um, get grant money to start a self-defense program for women in downtown Yonkers. And the YWCA got the program started. And I think she told me they've graduated two classes already of um, women. So. Uh, just another great thing our employees are doing on their free time. And I just want to end it with wishing everybody a joyous Passover and Easter. And that is my report. And then we go to the village administrator. 
Thank you, Mary. Just a couple items. I uh, just wanted to let the public know that the village is in receipt of additional COVID test kits here at Village Hall. Uh, the um, Westchester County uh, and our uh, State Assemblywoman, Amy Pollan, uh, as well as our Senator Shelley Mayor, have been very supportive in providing us supplies. So uh, we do want to make those test kits available to uh, any resident, and we only ask that um, if you could call uh, Village Hall in advance, and we'd be happy to provide you uh, with a box which contains two of the test kits. Um, given that some of the COVID numbers have been increasing, again, just wanted to let the, um, the residents know that we will make those available. Again, just reach out to us by calling Village Hall. Uh, <clears throat> also, just also want to remind all the residents that we do have a idling ordinance uh, or a prohibition of idling of your vehicle for more than three minutes. And this, is, um, this has been uh, brought to uh, a request to uh, enforce that has been brought to my attention by several residents given, uh, given the impact on the environment and also uh, the global impacts to um, the supply and price of, of oil. Uh, so um, again, just wanted to let the community know that we do have a prohibition of idling of your vehicle for more than three minutes. We've gotten some complaints of idling in front of the school for extended periods of time during the, the pickup and the drop-offs, um, or I guess the pickup in the afternoon. So we have advised our uh, part-time parking enforcement officers to simply go around with some flyers, tap on some windows, just ask some, a resident if they could uh, turn their car off. Um, and Stephen and I were discussing today possibly even a um, some type of not necessarily a campaign but a program with the school for the for the children or students to uh, perhaps one of the student body groups maybe to help um, educate the students and that we do have that provision in our peace and good order chapter of the code so anyway we're going to work on that but try to remember everyone that um, we don't want vehicles idling in the community for extended periods of time uh, then I just want to remind everyone uh, that with Friday uh, being a uh, holiday uh, pursuant to village contractual agreements, there will be no refuse collection on Friday. Uh, and uh, then I just want to report to the board that I did uh, meet with Con Ed on site to go over some of their upcoming gas projects this summer. Uh, and I will be reaching out to those neighborhoods, again, primarily being the continuation of the new gas line installation down Midland, which will uh, also include Willow as well as Hawthorne. So uh, to those individual neighborhoods, I will be uh, providing uh, additional information in the future, but the plan will be to uh, have Con Ed start that work after school gets out at the end of June. But as we always do, I'll walk um, or send emails and notification to the individual neighborhoods. I know it's it's an inconvenience, but at the end of the day, we do need the utility company does need to upgrade their gas infrastructure. Uh, and I am also Jim, with that with that gas work, gas line work. Will that will this be the final year of it, or will it? Yeah, it's a multi-phase, so this will not be. So for this year, I envision, and again, we've been trying to break it up into what Con Ed, what we can get Con Ed to complete during the summer and allow us to pay before the end of the summer, before Labor Day. So uh, with the right amount of Con Ed and subcontractor crews, I think they can go from where they finished last summer, which was just uh, south of Vine Street, to uh, just south of Hawthorne, including a new gas line all the way down Willow, uh, and all the way up Hawthorne. So okay. um, that's that. Then the subsequent year would be to take it from um, Hawthorne down uh, to perhaps Masterton. But the goal is to actually to get a new guest line all the way down to Library Lane. Well, okay, thank you. So uh, more information on that. And then I just uh, uh, let the public know that we uh, did have our public uh, bid, only one bidder for the um, construction of. Uh, new overhead uh, traffic signalization for the Midland and Palmfield intersection, also Gramatin and Palmfield. 
And right now I'm in discussions with our uh, engineering consultant, WSP, and also um, the one low bidder to determine uh, how we can try to uh, uh, expedite this uh, project if the board was prepared to uh, award it to the, to the low bidder and how we can um, account for the timing. So uh, I'm working on that because um, like many projects these days, there are materials that are going to be um, not available for an extended period of time. So what I'm trying to find out is if certain work that is uh, more disruptive could be done during the summer months so that we can uh, minimize the amount of work that needs to be done during the school year. Um, so more to be uh, updated on the board on that. So appreciate everyone's patience, but the, um, we did bid that project and just had the one bidder. And that's it. Okay, trustees, anyone um, want to speak at this point or mention something Jim and I might have missed? I just thought I'd give you the opportunity. Uh, I'll, I'll just mention that uh, we had a uh, work session about two weeks ago and met with the, uh, uh, I guess, our paddle and tennis pro, uh, who I'd not met before, and uh, I you know, was very impressed by the gentleman, and I think that you know, the trustees got a useful update on recreational facilities uh, from a racket sport perspective from uh, the person who's uh, sort of managing that program. And uh, again, you know, for the benefit of, of residents, now that the weather's getting better, if, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, Jim Palmer tennis permits are are available and Online, yes. and yes. tennis lessons will be available from our pro and uh, hopefully that will be another sign of spring and summer coming along. And uh, Bill also mentioned it's important that, that pickleball is being offered as well, which is a absolutely a huge change. The nation's fastest growing sport. Is it? Well, so they say. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to continue on. I need a motion to approve three sets of minutes from the executive work session of March 14th, the regular meeting of March 14th, and our budget work session of March 28th. Um, Mayor, before I make a motion, I, I was just reading the draft minutes, and it and it referred to the mayor's report, and it began reading, the Mayor Marvin gave a brief update on what she's been working on, and it immediately transitioned into a discussion of phase three of the sewer televising uh, work. And, you know, we, we, we appreciate your work as mayor, but want to assure residents that we aren't sending you personally down into the sewer system <laughs> to inspect them. <laughs> Uh, so with that <laughs> clarification um, as to the nature of your updates with the sewers, uh, I, I'm happy to move that we approve uh, the minutes. <laughs> it's like, aren't the Ninja Turtles, don't they live in the sewers, I think? <laughs> that was one of the with best that, clarifications. That clarification, I will gladly second. Yeah, okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion passes best minutes ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have a public hearing that we do every year. Some years we, we make it, other years we don't. It's to open a hearing to discuss the property tax cap override. Do I have a motion to open the hearing? So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Jim, a little background. How much does our proposed budget in dollars have us going over the um, property tax cap? I was just curious. It's for the for the, um, for the average resident, it'll be forty dollars. No, that's their tax increase. I meant how much. Um, in order to need the override, what are we spending? Do you see what I mean? It's $40 per household for the proposed budget. If the house, that's a median house of 2.2 million too. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the amount in excess, uh, the levy in excess of the uh, tax cap is 150, 156,000. Okay, okay. And the issue here, quite frank, is people understand this is not 2% of new services. We wish it was. This is, 
this is whether we can stay within, I mean, for example, when it comes from the state that our medical expenses are going up 7%. This is a lot of unfunded mandates, and this, this is reflecting fuel costs and health insurance and pension. And um, uh, what's also interesting is villages, unlike school districts and the state, any of our construction projects have to go into the tax cap. Um, as an example, we could have never done the pumps over at the school if we adhered that year to the cap. Um, and New York State doesn't apply the cap to its own budget, which is also rather interesting. So we never like to go over, but some years with costs, um, uh, we we do have, I think we've gone over once or twice in the past few years. Right, but and, and to that point, to your question is, so in short, this year we're going over the tax cap because we are uh, reducing our reliance on unassigned fund balance by 150,000. So in other words, we're going over the tax cap by 156,000, but most of that, all but 6,000, is because we're reducing our reliance on fund balance so we can maintain a healthy fund balance to do the uh, capital projects and or uh, borrow at the village's AAA bond rating so we can get the lowest possible interest rates on the long-term borrowing. So our long-term borrowing costs are exceptionally low. Uh, you know, and again, unfortunately, with the tax cap, the way the language is written is uh, the cap limits communities to 2% or the rate of inflation, whichever is lower. And obviously, the rate of inflation this year is over 4%, right. as measured by the Department of Labor in New York State, that New York State has their own formula, but that automatically puts us back at 2%. Interestingly, most of the years since the tax cap has been in effect, though, inflation, as everyone knows, up until this year, has been below 2%. So that would subject communities to, uh, again, uh, a levy increase of less than 2% when the fact of the matter is certain items are just going up beyond. But again, to clarify, this year, really the reason for going over is to uh, pull back our use of unassigned fund balance, which we relied on a little bit more uh, during the last two difficult, challenging years when our revenues had pulled back a little bit. Perfect. I guess I just want the public to understand yes. this yep. is not a 2% of new services. Right. We wish it was, but this is trying to pay our own bills. So, um, uh -huh. trustees, any other comment before I open it to the public on the tax cap? No. Anyone in the public want to speak on the issue of the tax cap? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to close our public hearing? I'll move it. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All righty. Now I would like to open a public hearing on the 2022-2023 village budget. Do I have a motion to open the hearing? So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And I guess what I did, I didn't want to um, put together our tax bill. Just I always like it to just come down to, you know, just dollars and cents. And to our average home price in the village, which is two point two million dollars, it will be an increase of forty dollars and ninety two cents this year in their tax bill if you have an assessment of 2.2. So it allows everyone to kind of have a feel of where they, where they might fit in. Uh, trustees, any c comments on the budget? We worked so long on it. Um, I just, I wanna commend um, Jim and Lori yeah. for all the incredible hard work they've done uh, throughout the year, not only during budget season, to um, put the numbers together, comb through it with such detail and diligence. Um, it makes our ability to look at these numbers so much easier. So I think you all have done an extraordinary job and um, really worked hard to keep the expenses low while still looking for sources of additional revenue. So uh, it's, a, I think, a, a very strong budget. Well said, here, here. Yeah, amazing job, yeah. Absolutely. Thank and, you both. And 
uh, again, uh, as a relative newcomer to the board, I haven't seen as many budgets, Mayor, as, as you have, or you, Deputy Mayor, have, have but uh, you, you look at the, the trend in increase in, in appropriations, and, and it's been very measured. It's been very, you know, it, it's been steady but slow, and uh, I think that's a, a testament you know, also to prior boards of trustees as well as the continued work of, of administrative staff, uh, Village Administrator Palmer, Lori Voss, uh, over, you know, quite some period of time to really, you know, get us on a, on a path of, of really sort of no, no surprises and uh, a growth rate that, that, that's steady. And I think that's what, what you want to have. You don't want to be going year to year where one year Yes, I'm, you know, there, there's no increase in the next year, you know, it's an increase of 10%. I think we're all sort of knowing that we're on a steady course and, and not doing something that, that really has a lot of unpredictability to it. And I, I think that having that, that record of, of predictability, I think, uh, is something that, that's valuable to residents, value, valuable to us as, as board members, and certainly speaks well of the consistent work of of senior administrative staff here in the village. I think that's well. And also, I'd like to thank you acknowledge that the, the budget was, as always, has been very well prepared. And I'd like to acknowledge the fact that I appreciate that the bulk of that work was done out af after the hours of 8 to 5. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Or Monday through Friday. Um, so th thank you for the sacrifices you, you've made to uh, make it such a high quality document and um, so professionally thought through. Thank you. Appreciate that. If I can just mention for the public edification too, we do, um, the budget is available on the uh, village website if they go to the treasurer's page. Um, you can see the adopted budget for last year and the proposed for this year. It'll take you directly to the, uh, to the link for the budget. And in included also in that is the, um, is the uh, capital plan, the five-year capital plan, which is a, a living, breathing document. But um, just wanted to make sure the public knows that they can see the budget online. So, and I, and I, I, did, I just want to thank all the, um, all the staff because it really does take, um, it is a team effort. We work real hard to review all the appropriations very carefully, um, go line item by line item tediously, um, so I don't have to go through every single uh, line item with, uh, with all of you. But um, at the end of the day, we were able to, as proposed, keep the appropriations to uh, under 2.5% to 2.31%. And of course, this takes into account some of these um, uh, variables right now that we do anticipate will uh, continue to impact us uh, into the into the new fiscal year, such as uh, fuel prices and uh, uh, when you start to break those down and the heating costs and how much um, uh, cost to to operate the um, uh, the sanitation vehicles. It starts to add up, uh, and likewise the staff, of course, with going through all the um, uh, the revenues and. Uh, the revenues we have squeezed almost two and a half percent above last year, which, um, as I provide you in some of the backup documents, the good news is that the uh, some of our go-to uh, revenues, like our permit sales, uh, are um, uh, back on the upswing. So that's that's all positive. All righty, and now I open to anyone who might be here tonight. And I see our colleagues from the library to talk about our proposed budget. We have our library board president, Margaret Major. Hi, Hi Margaret. Margaret. Thanks, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually don't have a copy of the, of the document that Jim just said is up on the, on the village website. So could you tell me what is the, um, what is the proposed village budget in total? Uh, total general fund appropriations are $18,457,640. And could you tell me what is the total um, library budget in that budget number? $1,511,259. Um, 
Okay, so that's a little bit different than what we were expecting. Um, Jim, which I know you and Mary are aware of that expectation that we were um, hoping for something a little bit different and the reason we were expecting something a little bit higher and we were hoping that you were gonna present it to the uh, trustees is because we are in a contract year with our employees. Um, so we do have a labor union with our uh, library staff and um, so we're at the table now with them and um, we are unfortunately one of the lowest paid libraries in Westchester and so we're going to have to address that um, and so that's going to be coming down the pike. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we were looking for um, uh, a bigger increase in our library budget this year. Um, we also um, talked to Jim several times about our book and ebook um, library budget, which hasn't been increased since 2018. It's been flat. Um, and um, we heard Mary talk about inflation and what it's doing to our overall village budget. Well, it's also um, doing the same thing to our library budget. Um, and both of those line items have been flat since 2018. So we did sit down with Jim with several of our library trustees and uh, talked, uh, talked it over with him and Mary, um, the fact that we were um, looking for an increase in both of those line items. And by the way, we are decreasing other line items in our budget. Um, so there are some offsets. For example, periodicals have been going down because they are digitized. So there are some offsets there, um, but overall, the number that Jim just cited would be an increase of 21,000, and we more appropriately feel that an increase of 41,000 uh, would be much more workable for our budget this year. So I'm not sure what we need to do to address that at this juncture. I don't know if this is an approved budget um, or... No, the budget, this is a budget hearing, and we're gonna keep the hearing open we are not so that we can frankly digest comments like yours and we're keeping it open until the 24th of april for anyone to um send in written comments and i will tell you jim in our public work session went over um as did i all the library's concerns and the numbers so the trustees um were brought very much up to speed on the library's concerns and needs. And, um, and then we will take up the budget vote, but not until after April 24th, when anybody has an opportunity, after perhaps looking at it on the internet, to comment. Well, that, we appreciate that, Jim. Thank you, and Mary, both of you, for um, bringing that up with the rest of the trustees in your work session. And, I do have it written, have my comments written, and I'd be happy to provide them to you be and terrific. the trustees and the public so that everybody can review um, our, the case that we're making for an, you know, a further increase beyond what Jim has already built into the budget um, for the library for this year. So um, we thank you for that. So, um, if, I, if I may, I just wanted to yeah, emphasize, uh, Margaret, and again, I appreciate um, meeting with you and the board and, and Greg, and while my proposed budget to the board represents the, the $1,511,259 um, to the library, again, that's my proposed. Once I file it, I cannot change it. However, we did have that um, meeting subsequent to the filing of the budget to, to look at those numbers, and uh, and that information that you provide has been shared with the board, but you know whatever else you have, they will absolutely, I am sure, take that into account that, uh, yes, like in the case of the uh, books, uh, initially the, the library director requested 53,000 in the proposed budget, it's 50,000. You've since uh, made a request along with the other board members to have that increase to 60,000, I believe, uh, and that's something that the board will definitely consider. Okay, thank you. Yep. And, uh, and as I said, uh, we'll provide those, those comments in writing as well uh, so that the village trustees can review and the public can review 
what we're requesting. So I'll just conclude by sharing that, you know, we did just recently do a strategic plan for the library and did an extensive survey of village residents and had overwhelming positive support for the library. So the library is considered to be one of the great amenities and one of the, one of the things that provides an, you know, a serious qual uh, quality of life amenity to village residents. So I hope you'll take that into consideration when you, when you think about the, uh, the library budget. I'll also just uh, put forth that the, um, the friends of the library are obviously great supporters of the library as well, and that their funds are raised for special projects. They're not raised to do things like pay for books, which is an operating expense of the library. So their funds pay for things like the village Tea, uh, I'm sorry, the teen room, which we just installed last year, and that was a cost of 40000 which is a, happens to be in line with what we're asking for, for an operating uh, budget increase, um, which would pay for staff salaries and books, so operating costs for the library. So um, please keep that in mind when you think about the library budget. So thank you. Thank Maybe you. if I could just if I could just say one other point, uh, um, but uh, just uh, Margaret, I just wanted to remind you and Greg that remember in the um, we do account for unsettled uh, contracts in the contingency line item, mm -hmm. uh, and as you know, we did um, my proposed budget did have forty seven thousand one hundred dollars in that line item, which is uh, thirty thousand dollars plus more than past years to to account for uh, those considerations. Yes. Yep. yep. Yep, that's right, Jim. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Trustees, you. Yep. any thoughts, uh, clarifications? Margaret, if you could leave your, your written comments, that would be terrific. And thank you. And thank you, Greg, who's our library director, for being here tonight as well. Nice to have you both. Margaret, can I just ask one quick question about the, um, the friends? Um, so when the friends do their fundraising, is there like a discussion between the library board or the director um, and the friends board with how those funds are specifically going to be dispersed and, and spent? You know, what's the, they have the specific guidelines as to um, what they can be used for and then you guys enter into a discussion on. on yeah, they're, um, the friends meet every month and Greg meets with the friends and there are there are guidelines, but they're not um, they're not it's not decided necessarily up front what the um, funds will be used for, mm -hmm. um, and so but they tend they do use them for special projects, so um, things that don't fall under the library's operating budget or the capital budget, like um, so they don't pay for things like the HVAC system or if the bu building needed a new roof or it needed. Um, uh, repointing of the bricks or anything related to maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. They don't pay for that, um, but they do pay for um, new technology equipment in the Jaeger room. Obviously, they paid for the teen room. They've paid for, um, you know, the, the grandfather clock to be repaired um, and fixed. Um, you know, they'll pay for a variety of things. So it's a, it's on a case by case basis and they'll discuss, it'll be just, Greg will bring, bring ideas to the friends. The friends will discuss it and um, the board will vote on, on, on a project and, and then that'll be how it's decided whether or not they'll fund it. But um, for the most part, if it's related to, you know, staffing or salaries or building maintenance, um, that's not what they're looking but to for, do. But for like for books or, uh, you know. Um. All, although I will say they do, they do, they will support, they have been supporting the um, digital book um, purchasing. Oh. So for the past few years. Um, so mm -hmm. they have been supplementing the budget there. But I, I, I've, I was on the board and there was debate whether or not they should be paying for books or if that's an operating expense. Mm -hmm. But they have been. Um, they have been supplementing the budget recently, in the, in the recent past. Yeah. Thank you. So they can, they can do it, but it's not really what they prefer to do. They right. prefer right. to do special projects above and beyond what the operating budget pays for. So one thing I just want to also um, mention before I leave the podium, which is that, you know, Greg, Greg um, we're, like, we're very fortunate to have um, Greg is our library director. He's an excellent budget manager, and he has come in under budget every year since he's been running the library. And in fact, this year he's he's running below budget and expects to come in somewhere in the 95 to 97 percent level 
um, relative to his budget, and he did the same last year too. So he keeps adding to the unassigned fund balance. So he's a contributor um, in that regard. <laughs> Even though we know that we, we do not generate revenue, um, we are, you know, our revenues are property taxes. Um, so we are supported by village property taxes, but, but we do have a very good budget manager in our library director. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also add that <clears throat> Greg had a major impact in reducing the co costs of the HVAC project. And so um, hats off there as well. Yeah. We're incredibly fortunate to have Greg there. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Do I have a motion then? To, no, I'm leaving the public hearing open. So you can uh, Close it, make a motion it to down. adjourn it to whatever, um, whatever date it is you're going to adjourn okay. it to? Or to, and, and to, uh, there's, to uh, keeping it open for written comment to, to such date. Is that what we're going to yes. do? Yeah. Yes. Should, should we vote on the resolution to pass the property tax cap override? That we're, we're going to do that. down in I thought maybe you were down in the resolution. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so Jim, let me understand. Is, is it the, 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 the budget? The public hearing. hearing will be is going to be remain open a, for a written comment. Okay, is to is going to be adjourned for the purpose of submitting written comments right. until twenty fourth. The so 5 o'clock p.m. on? Uh, till uh, uh, Sunday, April 24th at 5 p.m. At 5 p.m., at which time the hearing will close. Yes. Okay, so that would be the motion if someone wants to say so. Bill will say it. Yep. <laughs> and I'll just say, I, I, I'll move what Jim Scannett does to say. Yeah, yeah. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I, I'm right. sorry to be so nitty no, about that, but in the budget, the statute requires the closing of that hearing to take the next step, and that's why I'm trying to. Perfect. No, that's, that's we count on you down at that end okay. to help us out on these things. Thank you, Jim. Okay, now I would like to open a um, public hearing uh, for consideration of amendments to Chapter 260-14 of our Sidewalk Maintenance and Repair Law. Do I have a motion to open the hearing? And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, trusty comments, and I know my colleagues on this end of the dais have been uh, working hard on this, so uh, both, either of you, I'd love your thoughts. Well, I'll, I'll go first by saying that as part of the village's initiative to look at safe streets, uh, to improve the sidewalk networks, to you know, also look at our crosswalks and do some intersection improvements. Uh, as part of that broader effort, uh, you know, we wanted to look at the existing code provisions regarding sidewalk maintenance because property owners do have certain customary responsibilities uh, to maintain and take care of sidewalks that are adjacent to their property, even if it's in a village uh, right of way. Uh, I guess the uh, obligations, specific obligations, uh, uh, I'll address the question to village council, are typically included in statutory provisions. They're, they are common law obligations. And so we'd asked uh, Jim Palmer and village council Jim Stout to just review the existing code provisions to make sure that uh, they were up to stuff and in accord with uh, what our current understandings of those obligations were and to see whether they needed any clarifications. And, uh, and, and so we have a, a revision here. I'll let Jim, either of the Jims, speak to them specifically. I, I know that uh, Andrew Langhoff of the Village's Safe Streets group uh, wanted to be here tonight. Uh, he emailed the following comment, which he asked to be reflected uh, in our 
minutes and proceedings uh, on this subject, and he uh, writes, uh, the Bronxville Safe Streets group recognizes that sidewalks are essential for safe walking in the village, a goal we, the Safe Streets group, strongly support. As such, our village sidewalks need to be in good repair and free of obstacles. For these reasons, we believe that allowing the village to move more quickly to repair our sidewalks and to seek reimbursement from property owners for work done on their behalf is reasonable and laudatory uh, as a position for the village to take. Therefore, we support the passing of the proposed amendment to the local law as regards sidewalk repair and maintenance. Um, so that's a comment from the, the citizens group, which has been providing very useful input on all our broader initiatives to improve walkability uh, in, in the village. Uh, Trustee Knapp, if there's, feel free to add and expound. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I could. I think that was a great summary. Um, maybe after you talk about some more of the specifics, I can uh, add if we're going to go into the details. But yes, would would one of the the Jameses just give a quick uh, overview to the folks um, trying to understand? I mean, many folks actually didn't realize that the sidewalks abutting their property were their responsibility and not the village's. So this could be a, you know, a fairly big change for some folks. Go ahead, Jim. Yep. So um, we, the village in its code uh, ha had and has an existing law that generally provides that the property owner adjacent to a sidewalk has the responsibility to keep it up to stuff. Um, but the, um, after Jim, Palmer and I looked at the law with the charge to make sure that it's up to date, um, both in terms of sort of current statutory construct, but also in terms of our current practices and so forth, and also picking up on one or two issues that we want to be sure are clear to everybody. So that was our charge. We decided it, it did require amendments. Um, one issue was while, while it was always the understanding that the requirement is that you as an adjacent owner are required to repair and if necessary replace your sidewalk we thought the language could be tightened to make it to make it clear that replacement is also part of the obligation if it is necessary so we tightened that language there was we became aware through the work of the group that was looking at this that there was actually an issue of of people sometimes having removed sidewalks from in front of their property in the past um, and while we, you know, as a matter of what we refer to as lawyers as common law, um, don't think that's permissible. We made that clear by saying straight out in the statute, you cannot remove a sidewalk from in front of your property unless you go to the planning board and go through a process and so forth. I, unlikely they would ever permit it, but maybe there would be some reason, or maybe someone wants to move it from one area and put it in another, something like that. So we we made that clear, and then we. We've always had the concept that if we are, uh, if, if it is necessary for you to repair a sidewalk and you haven't done it on your own initiative, the village can come to you and, and, and say to you, you must repair the sidewalk. It's in, it is, for example, in an unsafe condition. So we, we clarified the procedures for that process to happen, that you will be given a notice, that you will, have to, you will be able to respond to the notice, um, and, and that we will give you specifications for how the sidewalk is to be repaired or replaced, that, that sort of thing. So we, you can say we modernized the law, we made it contemporary, we, we, um, we conformed it with uh, current, current practice, and, and, and that's, um, and that's what we have here. As you know from our discussion in, in, um, in work session, Mayor, um, we talked about the fact that the law, under the law, if one does get a notice to repair their sidewalk, um, it, it, is, it is clear from the law that in that notice you will be told within what time period you must repair the sidewalk. That can differ if you're in the winter and how large the project is and so forth. But you, Mayor, well pointed out that that could be, it could be made even clearer in the law that you will be told in the notice what your time frame is to do the repair 
each one will be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis, taking into account weather, scope of project, and so forth. So what I suggested is that we just, we add a sentence which doesn't change the substance because it's there anyway um, at the end, <coughs> excuse me, of section B4 that says the notice shall state the time frame which in the work, within which the work shall be completed. That's implicit in the later Thank language. You. So um, that's what this seeks to do. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Trustees, after that explanation, trustees, any other trustee comments on this legislation? I think it makes tremendous sense. It's yeah. yeah, I mean, I think in the context of, of uh, what Bill had mentioned about really, you know, making Bronxville an even more walkable town and, and having sidewalks that are safe and um, easily accessible, that really this um, set of guidelines or uh, resolution really codifies it and makes it much more clear what are the responsibilities so sidewalks don't disappear, so they're repaired, you know, according to a certain standard. Um, I think it's uh, a really great way to lead the, the way going forward. And, and Mary, you've often spoken about walkability. Uh, this is, I think, just a, 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 a way to benefit everyone. Uh, you know, and if your property happens to be next to a sidewalk, that's probably a, a nice addition because you're connected to a network of sidewalks. I think there are people in the village who are a little distant from any existing sidewalks. They kind of you know, wish they may be Maybe they did have a sidewalk in their neighborhood so they didn't have to be walking in, in the street. But uh, anyway, thank you to, to Council and to Village Administrator uh, Palmer for putting this together. It's certainly a, a good addition in my view. All right. Anyone in the audience who would like to speak to the amendment to the sidewalk maintenance law? Seeing none, then do I have a motion to close this hearing? So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And Mr. Palmer, you always do our new business for us. So, well, uh, uh, Mayor, should, should should we go ahead and, and vote on this? Because this has been duly noticed. So, right. are, are we ready to, to vote to enact? I'm going to go with the. I was sorry. Sure. Yep. We can do that one first. Yep. We can do that one do first, it. certainly. We can do it now if you want. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, so I'd move move adoption of uh, proposed uh, local law amendments to proposed local law for 2022. For 2022. For 2022. All right. I'll second that. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. And then the uh, tax cap override legislation. Do we have a I motion in a second? I'll move that. And I'll second that. All those in favor of the tax cap override? Aye. 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 All those, no, it's a unanimous motion passes. Okay. Uh, we have one uh, tax certiorari settlement that was recommended by the assessor. Property at 81 Parkway Road, one year involved uh, for refunds two uh, involving the 2019 year. Uh, total village refunds of 1000 $554 and school refunds of $6,482. Uh, and that was for the 2019 year. It seems very reasonable. I'll, I'll move it. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Can, can I just ask whether this is under budget? Uh, I, I assume we have some line item in contingency. I mean, th this seemed to be another excellent year in terms of resolving disputes. Uh, you know, uh, J Jim, did this sort of come in lower than contingency, if there is a contingency for this? Um, yes, you know, no, we've, um, yes, the, the uh, assessor settlements have been terrific, and yes, we do budget for um, a small amount of uh, refunds every year yep and we're on track or below yeah, I guess. we're on track or below yep and actually yeah right and well related to this something that we didn't necessarily highlight with the with the budget but that the uh the taxable value has increased significantly for this um 100 million dollars yeah, over 100 100 million dollars which is the highest um uh the village's total valuation of over three billion is um the highest in over 10 years so um 
that was uh, that's real positive. But yes, we budget for those, and uh, even this year, the number of small claims cases. I'm sorry, not this number of small claim, but rather the number of grievances filed was um, was less than uh, 30. So. It really, Bill, it really speaks to the strength of our tax roll and the re reval process we went through. Oh, must, that must have been 12 plus years ago, Mary, and um, and the uh, and the freak in our sort of multi-year updating of the tax roll. Mm -hmm. Well, having just reappointed Mr. Yagallo uh, for another year, I think this is. Uh, the point, point in favor of his appointment, that the number was, was so, uh, so low on reassessment and certiorari. I mean, we used to have prior to the reassessment, and our communities are comparable, we used to have upwards of 300 cases, and we're down to 30. I mean, the, the amount of money saved over that time period is... Uh, tens of thousands of dollars. So um, uh, Jerry's done a great job to answer, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Jim Palmer, can I take you back to the, uh, on the new business items that you're now going through. Item A was the adoption of the property tax cap override. Right. When you considered that earlier, you, you did the public hearing and you closed it. We do need, it, need it, to adopt it, that, right. You didn't right. vote the law. Right, we, we do so, need to, right, so, we skipped out. So if we could just still. Um, so you need um, a vote on the, yeah, a, a, vote on the a motion cap. to adopt local law number 3-22, if that's what you propose to do. Yes, we just didn't. I jumped to the tax cert. I should have uh, asked for the motion on the um, tax okay. cap override first. Yeah. Do we have to have, is there any rule in this for a voice vote? Uh, no, you, for a, you know. Uh, I no, thought you, you're there. Right. Let me think about that. You know, just to be sure, sure. let's do that. I think That's so. A good, it's what we call a roll call vote. Okay. All right, let's do that. I, think, I don't think you do, but let's. Uh, no. Let's, okay. let's do it just to be sure since you asked. Okay. Yeah, just I don't know why I yeah. thought so, I remembered. Why don't we still go ahead? Do we have Somebody a makes a, a motion second? and a second, then uh -oh. Jim can just call the roll. Move it. I'll, Helen seconded. All right. Then, Jim, you okay. can just call Trustee, out. Trustee Fredericks? Aye. Trustee Knapp? Aye. Deputy Mayor Underhill? Aye. And Mayor Marvin? Aye. Yep. All right. Motion passes. Thanks very much. Thanks. Yep, just a nice, uh, just a nice uh, resolution recognizing that the um, proclaiming Arbor Day in the village as um, Axish, uh, yes, recognizing Arbor Day on April 29th of this year. We do this, we do this each and every year. We celebrate in conjunction with New York State, which is the uh, last Friday in April. Uh, and then, as the mayor and the board knows, we are. Um, we encourage residents to plant trees. We continue to plant um, uh, we, uh, trees in public property and the village budgets um, $100,000 a year for tree preservation and pruning, which is um, more than most communities, well beyond what the um, uh, National Arbor Day Foundation uh, recommends. So just wanted to mention that. And then, of course, the board is asking us to consider a, a tree preservation ordinance, which we're working on. So, Which I think, Trustee Knapp, you can speak to that as the point person right. with the Green Committee. Yeah. Well, I think um, we've been, you know, considering how, what is the best way to um, work with residents and property owners to um, maintain, you know, the tree canopy we have in the village that you know is such a major part of the beauty of our community and such an important um, asset <clears throat> to the environment. So uh, we've been working, Jim has been looking at other communities, we've been working with the Green Committee, um, Stephen has been um, doing a lot of research to understand what other communities are doing um, to try and there's a, a range of, of possibilities in terms of, you know, having tree commissions, um, tighter regulations around the taking down of trees, encouraging planting of, um, of, of large-scale native canopy trees. So we're taking a, a kind of a deep look at all this data and seeing what other communities have done successfully. Um, Ellen Edwards put together a really great kind of foundational document that describes um, what other communities are doing, and she interviewed um, administrators from other communities, people who are on the tree commissions of other uh, municipalities, um, various landscape architects. So there's some great information that we've got assembled. Now we just have to kind of comb through it and put together some um, 
kind of uh, draft recommendations right. on how we can proceed. As a point of information, is, is one of the things that the Green Committee looking at uh, trying to inventory streets which uh, could have more canopy and making recommendations for, uh, you know, if, if some group of residents on a street wanted to plant something that, that the village would approve planting of a, of a particular tree. And I'll make it in the context of, if you referenced maintaining the tree canopy, uh, you know, Bob Underhill has as much tenure in the village as I have, but we're kind of old timers in terms of having grown up here. You know, I, I just have the sense from walking around the village that there is less tree canopy today than there was, you know, 50 years ago. And that, I think, is partly because so much of the village's development was, you know, in the 10 years after World War One, And, you know, we're now in 2020, but you figure the life of a mature, old-growth hardwood tree is probably about 75 to 100 years. So I'm, I'm certain that when a lot of Bronxville farmland was sort of converted to subdevelopments, you know, people planted oak trees, maple trees, hickory trees. And a lot of elm trees, by the way. Well, as my mother likes to say, there were, you know, Elm Rock Road was like a cathedral ceiling because of all the the elms going down Elm Rock, you know, if you were growing up here in the 30s. Um, but I, I, I anecdotally just feel that that we're probably every year at a lower number in, in terms of trees, just because a lot of trees, which I think were planned, planted you know, to make nice tree-lined suburban streets, they've come to the end of their well, natural it's that, life. They've come to the end of their natural life, and then, as we all know, the, from the 30s, every time people buy a, a house that was built in the 20s, they they grow it and expand it. Yeah. And so they, you know, people cut down mm -hmm. the trees on their property to make more room for expansions, or or, or a storm has come and um, the trees go down, and people replace them with trees often, but they're they're dogwoods or they're yeah. um, you know cherry trees. They're not the big mature um, large scale shade trees. So that's um, we're looking to you know see what is the really examining the diameter of trees, and so you when if a, if you take a tree down, um, it has to be replaced with something comparable, not just um, yeah. not just a, a collection of small trees. But but I think you know by this time next year I, I think that you know the the village can and this board can really do something to advance things the tree ordinance which you know the mayor has done a lot of you know, spade work on to, to get really good ones. And I'd, and I'd love to see the village sort of come up with, with almost an adopt uh, a, a tree notion with the, the Green Committee that sort of says, you know, you know, here are some streets where it would be really great to have a couple of trees in 20 years and you know, to have a policy with, with the village. I mean, you don't want to plant a tree, let's say, where a sidewalk is going to go. But uh, I, I, I think there's great potential here for us to, to to do more and it would make the village great not only for us but really more importantly for future generations yeah i think that sounds great that's great. A, great. a nice way why don't you move the resolution bill <laughs> yeah. I, I will move the uh, the resolution proclaiming arbor day in the village yes second 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 all those in favor aye, aye. motion passes what, what is that great line? It's, it's one of the Chinese proverbs, the best time to plant a tree was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's uh, yeah. one of my favorite. All right, Mr. Palmer, we have a couple more things left. Uh, yes, uh, the next one is just uh, uh, accepting a uh, PEG grant from Cablevision as part of the village's uh, negotiated franchise agreement with Cablevision back in 2014. Uh, the village received uh, payment uh, installment number two for twenty uh, for twenty five thousand uh, so, dollars. So, so uh, this is just collecting what's right. owed to us, right? Correct. And the village uh, and to authorize putting this into the village's capital fund, and then uh, the board can decide to, uh, how we want to apply it at a later date. Yep. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept this grant? So moved. And a second. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 
Okay, and the, uh, the next item is uh, consideration of the adoption of an organics management plan uh, and a copy of the plan should also be included in your, uh, in your packets. Um, Helen, did you, did want, you to want to speak, speak to that, Helen? Yeah, yeah so um, just in an overall sense, um, wasted food and um, other organic wastes are major generators of greenhouse gases. And the, one of the long-term goals of the village is to uh, reduce the amount of waste um, designated for landfills. And we have um, implemented several programs, such as the residential yard waste program and the food scraps program, um, to kind of reduce the amount of waste that we're sending to landfills. Um, we've also uh, decided to, to participate in the Climate Smart Communities program and one of the requirements um, for that program is for the village to draft a organic waste management um, plan that really outlines what we're doing um, in this area, kind of talks about the partnerships that we've been involved in and lays out sort of a blueprint for um, expanding these programs into the future. Um, so like <laughs> so many of the initiatives in this sphere, we have a huge amount of thanks to give to the Green Committee and, um, and Ellen uh, Edward, Edwards personally, who really um, spent a great deal of time and effort in putting together this organics waste management plan. Uh, it's got a lot of detail, it's great reading, really talks a lot about the partnerships and um, how to expand them, especially in the food scrap recycling program. You know, we've launched that successfully um, in, among village residents, but there's a lot more that can be done in terms of um, expanding to the school, um, she just sent out a survey to the, um, uh, the businesses in town, the restaurants, uh, the, uh, the uh, food service providers to try and see if they would be interested also in participating in, in the food scrap program. So uh, there's a lot to be done there. So this program, uh, this uh, organic waste management plan, I guess Jim will be posted on the, on the website. Yes. Uh, the village. Yes. Uh, we, we, yes, we can do yeah. that. Yep, we should. And I believe it uh, counts for several points, eight points in the uh, Climate Smart Communities Plan, which we are hoping to get enough points to uh, submit by June and achieve bronze status. So. Uh, yes, and we have our assistant village administrator, uh, Stephen Shallow, who works with Ellen and then works with Helen and. Uh, Thank you, Stephen, because yeah. I know we've um, the coordinator of the yeah we've made you the plan. captain in Village yes. Hall of this. So uh, <laughs> thank you. All right. So do I have a motion to adopt the organics management yeah, plan? I, yes. Yeah, I, I was just going to say thank you to, to Trustee Knapp because uh, I know that a lot of work by the Green Committee, but I, I know a lot of these initiatives. You know, Helen is just. Done, done great work to, to move them Absolutely. forward, so thank you. All right, then do I have a motion? I'm kind of waiting for Helen to move it. Okay, oh. yes. So okay. moved. Yes. Well, I will, Enthusiastically. I will yeah. Yeah. support it. Thank you. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Enthusiastically. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Motion passes. Okay, and one more uh, SCAR settlement as presented by the assessor. This one uh, involves uh, the year 2020 and uh, two uh, small claims uh, settlements. I'll move it. <clears throat> That's a total for the village of $889, and I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Trustees, any other ending comments? Anyone have? How's, yeah. how's the Memorial Day Parade coming? How is the Memorial Day Parade coming? <laughs> We're getting... Good, good. So put, uh, put a... Put a, put a we got to have a committee meeting, right? We're going to get going on that. Yeah, yeah keep that momentum. Yeah. But so maybe you can mention something. Oh, know. that's, and yep. you know, it's a great idea to even mention tonight. It's our 100th parade. So we just, anyone has an idea of who should be invited, who would like to be here. Um, if you uh, know of a group, a talent, uh, a band. Library. 
<laughs> yeah. So please tell us, seriously, any leads? Because, you know, we're a small operation with no, no real uh, parade committee, as they have another, um, I think the... We have a committee of two. Yes, the parade committee is right here. <laughs> yes, maybe, maybe three. We have a parade committee of three. Three co-captains. But seriously, any help, because we want to make it the... Um, Cy and Vicki Ford are coming back from Minnesota so that we can honor them. And um, we just want to make it as special and as inclusive as possible. So um, anyone with ideas, reach out. Um, Great. Before we close, can I also just ask, uh, thank you, was the, uh, is the board available then to meet for considering adopting the budget that uh, Monday, April 25th. I'd like to get a day on the calendar if we could at early or whatever the pleasure is of everyone. Is that possible? Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, time that's convenient for everyone? Early morning, evening? April 25th, evening is good for me. Um, I have to, I didn't bring my calendar. Evening is better for me. Let me, I'll, I'll make it work. Okay. Something like that. Um, okay, do you think you might be able to do it? Sure, I'll um, figure it out. Okay, all right, why don't we say um, April 25th at um, 5.30 p.m. Uh, the board will convene. Okay, uh, Monday, April 25th at 5.30 p.m. Okay, cool. Okay, and now I open to the public for any comments. Um, okay, I, uh, so Margaret Major, um, one more public comment. And, uh, so um, last week was National Library Week, um, which is great. But this month is National Poetry Month, and I brought a I brought a poem from the library to <laughs> to read to the village trustees, and I thought you might like it. Um, and it's called it's by Anais Nin, and it's called Risk. Um, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Happy spring, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank on you that. for everything you do. Thank, thank you. you. And Margaret, thank you for yeah. much your, your leadership to the library. Yeah. It's really important. And it's my pleasure. Believe well, me. I love the library. So. Th as that's as evident. As <laughs> yeah. we all do, and I know we do. <laughs> Thank you. On that nice note, when is our May meeting, Mr. Palmer? I now May 9th. May 9th. So I have a motion. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. In a second? Second. 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 And we'll meet again May 9th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. See everyone in May. A heads up and reminder I will not be.